Hi guys. So this is probably, oh there's a fly. How uncomfortable. Oh there he is again. Nope. Nope. Not going away. Okay good. Oh. Nope. Okay. So this, so this is probably, and by probably I mean definitely going to get some possible feedback. <laughs> That's okay. I have literally been up the past three nights wanting to speak about this, but not knowing really what to say. Yep. And I'm going to tell you that as a white person, it's scary to talk about it because when it comes to racism, we haven't experienced it. And so we don't know all of the nuances and the sensitivities, right? I want to kind of start with the story with how I first, my first racial experience, which was um, I was in college. I fell madly in love with a man. He was black and, or is black. And um, he, I mean, I was like smitten with this guy. You guys have no idea. He's so cute <laughs> and so smart. And um, we actually, there was a lot of um, discussion of just like philosophy and things like that, which is like, because he's so smart. And uh, one thing that he brought my attention to was as a black man, there were certain things that he couldn't do. As a black man, there were certain things that, yeah, just were unsafe for him, I guess, would be the way to put it, or that he would get flack for. As a white 18-year-old child from Kentucky, guess what? I was unaware of that. It was not on purpose. Um, it, I had not experienced being a black man, and so I, I didn't know. And um, my heart broke. I actually remember that conversation ending in tears. Um, mine, not his. And just being so angry at the world. Just being like, what? You know, just really like not believing. You know, like not believing this could be the world. This could be, you know, the world that we were in. And this was some years ago. And that was me like understanding it. I went on to date, you know, other black men and other people of many different races or other people, many other people of different races. And, uh, yeah, you, you see it, you see it when you're in there like that. So what I'm going to say is, um, to the black community, I've seen some stuff on TV that make me sad there's been a lot of stuff I should probably discern a little more. But, you know, perspectives of, of black people that I didn't even know were there, existed. Um, and I know a lot of white people feel the same way. You know, like, you, we just didn't know. It, I mean, I heard somebody just kind of really be angry and listen, I hear you, you know, as much as I can from my perspective. But in no way, I, I just, I, I can speak for me and I can speak for those people that are really close to me. Nobody was purposely ignoring that problem. It wasn't within our sphere the same way it wasn't in my sphere at 18 to even know about it. And I ask, I ask the, the black, black America, I ask the world you know, let's educate each other on this so that we can be aware and so that we know what to do. Because it sucks to even know I'm going to post this and probably get some hate. And just, and it also sucks that I've been up at 3 a.m. the past four nights being like, man, I really feel strongly about this and I want to say it, but I was too scared to do it. And that's just the fucking truth. I was too scared to put it out there because it doesn't, it, 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 I was going to get hate from somewhere. I don't know where. Who knows? Maybe all sides, you know? And uh, I don't know how we can move forward if we don't feel comfortable enough to speak on it. I can say this as like somebody who has other white friends. We want to help. We don't know how. 
And that's our ignorance. And we're, we're obviously trying to work through it, but there's going to have to be some sort of, um, you know, education or bridge that bridges this topic. Because I can tell you that I can't think of one friend of mine that's like, I'm okay with what happened to George Floyd. No one. No one, you know? And so I just don't like that. I guess I feel like I keep getting that vibe that that possibly me because of my skin color and other white people are okay with it. No, no, that's, it's so not true. And it's just heartbreaking to think that anyone, and I take it personally, like, which I shouldn't, but I, I do. And I'm just like, but no, that's not, it's no. As far as the older, the older white generation, this is a toughie, guys. So if you are feeling triggered, <laughs> just stop now. <laughs> um, because I'm not here to be political. I don't do politics. And I'm not here to sell anything. I'm just here to give you guys perspective. And to then gain some, hopefully. But what I will say is the older white generation, and I, again, I speak for people that are within my sphere. They grew up in a different time. True. Their opinions are different about a lot of things. But what I do know is that they did not feel what happened was okay. They do not feel, again, my people that are close to me, that, that any, any inequality is okay. What I do feel they will struggle with, and this is up to them to kind of work on, well, to work on is putting themselves in the shoes of black people and understanding like, this is real, right? Because you have to understand, just like when I was 18, I mean, I'm sure somebody had said something to me about it, but it didn't digest with me. Why would it? it I hadn't, you know, I hadn't lived it. It was only after I lived it, and that was through, you know, just being romantic with others, that I was like, Fuck. And now, you know, I have cousins that are mixed. And so I see this. I ask for all of us to come together to bridge this gap. Because the only way that we're going to fix anything, because these are giant structures that have to be rebuilt, is together. Peace.